Okay, we're sitting here in Dream Arena Extreme right after the grand final with Devil Walk and Pronax from Fnatic, the champions of the first major event in CSGO, 100,000. Nice, but nice big check coming there. How does it feel? Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's indescribable. Uh, it's just so much joy and like almost want to cry and you just shake because it's a pretty big achievement. Um, it's the biggest I've been through and it's, yeah, I don't know. Well, Pronax, obviously your teammates are even younger. I mean, they haven't been around for too long, but you've been around the 1.16 for quite a while, and you always were in teams that would get to like top three finishes in tournaments, but you never could quite get the, get here where you finally got, uh, especially coming in just maybe two weeks after you joined the team or so. How does it feel for you finally getting through and getting that one major win? Uh, it feels awesome. Like uh, I, I have never played in a team where there is so much skill in the team, except for maybe ESC in 1.6. But that's the team had uh, their other problems. But uh, I mean, I'm just happy that they asked me and uh, that I got the chance. So, like I said, you guys didn't have a whole lot of time to practice for this tournament. I think Schneider said one and a half weeks or so in our previous interview. So, how did, how exactly did you get everything working so quickly within the team? I mean, usually it takes quite a while to get all the shots working. Um, I feel like your playing style or your leadership style usually actually works a little faster because you don't do anything too crazy. You're just kind of simple things that work within your players' limits. How did, how did you do it? Uh, like I said, we just tried to play simple. Like uh, I think we have like one or two strats on every map. Other than that, we just have the standard round, and I m make mid calls out of that. And uh, the guys are really good at taking initiative themselves as well. So th that's why we won, I think. So obviously JW was just a monster this whole tournament. I mentioned earlier to Snyder that the last time he was really playing this well was here la in the summer. I mean, since then he's I mean he's been good, but he hasn't been like a superstar since then. Uh, Snyder said that he's probably half of his more, having more motivation for DreamHack obviously and half just getting to do more things that he wants to do and he feels comfortable doing in your new, new playing style. Uh, how do you, what do you think about him? It's not well, JW best. That's the obvious choice of words. Uh, but you know, he's the greatest talent Sweden has produced in a long while, I think. Um, Opera as well. Uh, you know, it's just one of a kind. So, coming back to the earlier question about your struggles in 1.6 to overcome these Swedes, I mean, you would often even get upset wins in Swedish qualifiers. You would get like one, one win here and there, but you'd fall, fall behind in the final. Now, DreamHack Summer, you were actually really, really close to knocking NIP out of the tournament. There's that one 1v3 defused by Exist that just almost legendary by now because I mean that's around you win 99 out of 100 times at least did you did you actually think back to that round at all during this match like was there ever a point where you sort of felt like especially after losing that second I'm like oh is this gonna be another one of these uh, no I, I won't do the same mistake one more time I mean that round still sticks with me of course but uh, I, le I, le I learned from it and uh, all, all of the Fnatic players saw it as well and they make fun of me all the time for it we so. actually made fun of it like before the match <laughs> so it's not gonna happen again how did you feel going into the match after you drew the maps I mean I figure you knew what maps you were gonna play pretty like as soon as you knew who you were gonna face in the final it's pretty obvious. I mean, you, you guys don't play Nuke, right? And NIP probably does not going to play Mirage. You guys are good on it, and they haven't played it a whole lot. So, how did you how did you feel your chances on, were on each map? Because I actually felt like you guys probably would have had a better chance on to win Dust2 and Inferno, just 2-0 straight up. But obviously, your train just turned out to be a tiny bit better than I thought. Uh, I I knew we could win Dust2 for sure, but uh, in in the tournament, it has been our worst map for sure, and. Uh, uh, we, um, our best map is actually Inferno, so I was surprised when we lost Inferno so hard. Uh, but then train, we have actually been very good on train at practice, so I wasn't surprised that we won. But uh, I was surprised by the, by the score because I thought it would be on more even map. Speaking of being surprised, I was actually really surprised not to see JW opping on train. I mean, I didn't see your match against Recursive, so I didn't know if that was normal, if he just chose to do against Nip. So was that a special adjustment or is he just not opping on the what I would think is the most op friendly map? Uh, well, the thing is, he's so talented at being aggressive pop. We don't have any players that really like that position as much as he does and can hold it as well. So we just need him there to actually make it a strong map for us. 
how confident were you after the 13 to 2 lead? Obviously, on training is a map where you could theoretically lose that, even though it's a massive advantage. Now, I mean, it's pretty much over once Get Right didn't see Snyder on the piss round. You know, he actually saw Snyder on his screen. Oh, really? Yeah, he's not saw Snyder behind the barrel, oh. but he's like didn't look there, I guess, with his eyes. Um, how confident were you before the piss round? Did you ever think that there was a maybe a outside chance? NIP gets the pistol, they get things rolling, and you still have to really struggle and work for it? Uh, yeah, for sure. We just said like uh, take one round uh, at a time. Like uh, don't stress, and we we're just so so focused. And uh, yeah, uh, I know that the teams can come back because we did it on those two as well. Um, the T side on train is really strong, so. Uh, I, I wasn't personally that worried, but I mean, NIP is NIP, you know, that's probably why you would be nervous, but not our, our T side is really strong on train as well. Okay, so Devil White, you guys have, I mean, Pornax is not really included in this because he's been around so much longer, but you guys have come a really long way since the time JW and company, I'm not sure if you were playing them, beat Nip in that online match late last year, and then you went to Copenhagen Games, you did pretty well, you broke out of DreamHack Summer. I mean, it's been a really big year for you guys. How, how does he feel just coming out of nowhere and just getting to this point so quickly? Um, well, it's, yeah, it's unbelievable as well, but um, it's all about like having fun while you do it. And we've just had so much fun and you just keep improving and improving just because it's so fun. Um, I don't know, it's just comes naturally, I guess, with, with it, so yeah. But it, it's unbelievable and it's really like, it makes yourself proud and um, yeah. So something people have been wondering about quite a lot is Karin was sitting right behind you with a headset and a laptop. So what exactly was his role? Was he a motivator? Did he offer any advice? What did he do exactly on the stage sitting behind you during that whole series? Uh, he just like uh, pepped us up, like said things like, come on guys, uh, just uh, keep calm and just m motivation stuff, like just stuff like that. And maybe sometimes he said like, uh, yeah, you, you should push there or like just uh, small reminders basically, but uh, nothing major. Okay, well, I think that's about it. Once again, congratulations, winning the biggest tournament ever in Counter-Strike and the first actual major in CSGO. Uh, where are we going to see you guys next in terms of tournaments? Do you have anything planned? Dust 4. We might just have to add something here at the end just to give context to that answer. Uh, do you guys have any shout-outs? Any sponsors you want to thank? Yeah, we want to thank uh, our, all our sponsors, uh, Fragnet, uh, MSI, uh, Winamax and SteelSeries. Anything else you want to add? Karn and uh, Daniel and the whole Fnatic crew for sharing for us and uh, um, Vox, uh, Eminor, they were really supportive throughout our whole tournament. We met them in China and um, yeah, they're good friends. Alright, well thanks for the interview, congratulations once again and this is AgelTV.org signing off from Yun Choping. We just include all of this and be like, this is what happens when you have to play from like 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. for three days in a row. Like, this is what happens. You can't have these schedules. Train, we have actually been really good on train on practice. We haven't played it a lot in tournament, but because we really like Inferno. So, yeah, well, I, f I thought we could win uh, train for sure. No, action. Cut. <laughs> so, you guys. You guys already knew what maps you were going to play as soon as you got through complexity. Obviously, you guys don't play Nuke. You guys are very good on Mirage. It's very likely NIP was going to remove that. How did you f fancy your chances on all those maps when you saw the breakdown and you actually got through? I actually thought you would have a better chance to win the first few maps than Train. Didn't, didn't know you guys were that good on Train. Uh, how did you feel going into each map? Uh, I actually thought that if we were going to lose one map, it would be Dust, four, dust 2 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Start that over. <laughs> can, can we just can we start over from his answer? Yeah, answer okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I actually thought that uh, if we would lose one map, it would be dust too. <laughs> Get it together. Yeah. <laughs> serious business, man. Oh yeah. So tired as well. So. This guy's so uh, so unprofessional. No, he's the in-game leader. He gets to answer these questions. Uh, if I've, I've. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh fuck, okay, I'm just sick. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay. Oh. okay, good? Yeah. Uh, I knew we... we ha <laughs> <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> well, let him answer! Yeah. Okay. Give I'm that just, question I'm just, to I'll him now. Do, I'll just do this. The whole time. <laughs> They're destroying my life here. <laughs> We're gonna make I just can't I look at the I don't even know what I'm gonna answer anymore. He said that's four. I just can't look at his face. You know the bloopers video would probably be more popular than the actual interview. <laughs> okay, we good? Okay, I'm gonna try something. Easy. Bring. Dust two. <laughs> <laughs> we just start from dust two.